This is fourth grade history, and we are going to be looking at what we're going to be reviewing. And <clears throat> I'm going to do this is that I'm going to post this for lesson 132 and lesson 133. Um, if you only need to watch this video once and you review and you're ready to take the test, you don't have to watch it again. But I'm just going to leave this video for both lessons. So then when if you do need a second day of review, um, then you can go ahead and um, get that. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to look at is the map of Wyoming. And I have created, let me see if I can hold it up here for you guys to see. All right, I can get my directions correct. Okay, so um, this is the map that I've created that looks very similar to what you're going to see on the test. Um, I've added a couple th extra things, but um, this will help you to um, study for this test. And so the first thing is to note the, um, the states that surround Wyoming, okay? So at the very top, we have Montana. Um, I know Wyoming is written there, but that's to show that this is the state of Wyoming. So the very top is Montana. So Montana is our northern border, okay? On our <clears throat> and on our western side, Idaho is our western border, but it also is a little bit of Utah is part of our western border. But Utah also forms part of our southern border. You see that, and then Colorado forms most of our southern border. Over on the east side, we have South Dakota at the top and Nebraska at the bottom, and those form. Um, about, um, Nebraska forms a little bit more of our, of our eastern border. But those states are the states that surround Wyoming. And those are important to remember because um, you, you would need to know if you, when you get older and start driving, you need to know which direction you would need to go um, out of the state to get to a different state and to get where you're going. And, Maps help and definitely we've got our Google Maps and um, we do still have print maps that my dad advocates. Um, and then there's many ways to know where to go, but um, knowing some of these things is very helpful. All right, and then if we take a look at the very top, um, corner of our state is Yellowstone National Park and I just kind of shaded that in to look like the park. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of give you like the half of the view. There's the Wind River Range that's about the middle of the state. There's a couple of cities that I want you to remember. Um, we've talked about them. There's Sheridan and that that one is more north than Gillette and Gillette is heading is on the road that's heading to South Dakota, okay? Um, Sheridan is on the road heading to Montana because um, Billings is, is almost north of Sheridan and um, that's where people in Sheridan go for their big shopping, like we go to Salt Lake, okay? And then on the bottom of this, I'm gonna fold it a little bit and we're gonna look at the bottom. So you've got Evanston, over here, remember when you go into Utah, you go to Evanston. The road that it is along is I-80 or Interstate 80. So you see the little 80, I-80 there, okay? You first come to Green River from Evanston. That will be your first stop. Um, if you're coming straight from Evanston and, and you didn't stop anywhere in between, you'd come to Green River first and then Rock Springs. But then if you've traveled farther along, you come to Rollins in a few hours and then Cheyenne. And, and I know that some of these things are not exactly where they go. I got the best, uh, the closest that I could, but this map will help you when you're studying for this test, okay? Um, one other thing is that below us is the Flaming Gorge and I just did a, a, a little, um, kind of looks like a lake, sort of. Um, and so I just wanted to, to point those things out to you 
If you need to go back on this video and freeze it so you can study that map, that's okay. You can always do that. And I want you to, to be the best prepared that you can for this test, even though I can't be with you physically um, and help you prepare, I'm gonna do it this way, okay? So there's your map of Wyoming. And then we're gonna, um, you're also going to do skill sheet 17. Um, and I just subtly hit the answers. Yes, I did. Um, skill sheet 17 is writing the states and capitals. You can find a, a map of the states and capitals on page 248 and 249 in your book. Um, and then there's the list of states and capitals on 254 and 255, which we're actually gonna look at in just a few minutes. So um, when, I'm, when you're done with the video, um, please complete that skill sheet. And um, if you didn't complete skill sheet 16, for some, whatever reason, you can go back and do that one as well. I wanna make sure that you're up to date with those. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm gonna ask you some questions from chapters 14 and 15 because this test is not just over state history, it's also over um, chapters 14 and 15 again. It's kind of like a big review test and then we're gonna move on to chapter 16 after we've done this, okay? So what school did Booker T. Washington establish in Alabama? All right, give you a few seconds to see if you know the answer. It would be Tuskegee Institute. Very good if you got that. If you didn't, but make sure you um, remember that and study that. What is George Washington Carver known for? George Washington Carver, what is George Washington Carver known for? It was his ability to work with plants and his uses for the peanut and the sweet potato. That's what he's known for. Very good. Which of the crops that Carver urged farmers to plant has become very profitable? Which of the crops that Carver urged farmers to plant has become very profitable? And that would be the soybean, soybeans. Okay. By the middle of the 1800s, what was the last frontier that remained to be settled? Hmm. It was the Great Plains and the areas around the Rocky Mountains, um, also known as the West, um, is what they, they would also say. Okay. Um, number or. I'm not giving you numbers. The next one is what did the buffalo provide for the Indians? Name some things that the buffalo provided for the Indians. Well, there was food, obviously. I mean, that's an animal, so it was food, shelter. They could make um, their, the sides of their teepees out of the buffalo skin. Um, they could also use the um, skin for clothing. They could use the, the bones for, to make tools and structure. So those were some of the things that they provided. Food, shelter, clothing. Um, why were the buffaloes disappearing? Well, white men came in and they began killing off the herds. And so they started disappearing and the Indians we're not happy with that, right? Where were the Indians put when the white men began to settle the Great Plains? They were put on reservations. All right, now I'm gonna ask you some questions from chapter 15. Who was the father of American missions? Remember who was the father of American missions? It was Adoniram Judson. Adoniram Judson. What is an immigrant? What is an immigrant? Okay, I'm sure you've given many good answers. It's a person who leaves his own country to make his home in another country. So someone from another country that comes to a new country um, to live, it would be another way of putting that. Um, why did so many immigrants come to America? Mm 
That's right. It would be for a freedom and opportunity. They wanted a better life. All right. <clears throat> um, and this, some of the people that we've looked at, name the lawyer who became one of the first evangelists to hold large citywide revivals. It would be Charles Finney. And what evangelist who came after Finney drew huge crowds to his revivals and founded a famous Bible Institute in Chicago? Dwight O. Moody. I'm sure you guys knew that one or you suspected after you heard the Bible Institute, the Moody Bible Institute. Um, in fact, from Moody Press is where we get many of the science videos that we've watched this year um, that they have put out the spectacular videos that tell about insects and different um, the stars and planets and, and all those different things. That's been a, a huge help um, to many. What baseball star became a famous evangelist? This one was Billy Sunday. I'm sure you guys knew that one as well. If you didn't, um, just make sure that you're studying these and that you mark the ones you didn't get so that you can go back and um, see that. What, there were two products that helped America's industry grow and what were they? Okay, and they were steel and oil. And who developed the steel industry in America? Andrew Carnegie. Okay, and then who developed the oil industry? There's John D. Rockefeller. And it's very, very well um, known and, and very wealthy men. And remember that they gave away a lot of their wealth to help people because of um, their love for people and their desire to do what was right. And what did Robert Fulton name his steamboat? Remember the first, the steamboat that Robert Fulton made, what did he name it? That was the Claremont, okay? And who invented the telegraph? The man that invented that also invented a code to go with that. So it was Samuel Morse and he invented the Morse code, which was what? It was a series of dots and dashes used to send messages over the telegraph. So those, um, the dots and dashes, the, the short, short taps and long taps that would um, come with, with a telegraph and then they would decipher what those letters were coming across and then they would tell you the message. Um, now, the next inventor, in, he was, <clears throat> he taught people that were deaf and mute and later invented the telephone in order to help those people. It was Alexander Graham Bell. And who was his assistant? That was Thomas A. Watson. And the first words that were spoken over the telephone, I think you all know, I'll give you a second though. Mr. Watson, come here, I want you or I need you. I think it's interpreted both ways, but those were uh, the first words spoken over a telephone and it, showed, and it showed that it really worked to do this. Um, when did people really start to take notice of Bell's telephone? So a specific place that he brought the telephone it was at the World's Fair in Philadelphia in 1876. So that was a centennial year for America. That was a hundred years, because remember America was founded in 1776, and this is 1876, so 100 years later, I mean, this was a centennial, or um, our country had been around for a whole century. And so that's when they started taking notice of this 
um, contraption that they didn't understand. How many inventions did Edison design? Okay, we're skipping inventors, we're, we're moving on. So how many inventions did Edison design? And it was over a thousand. We don't have an exact number, but he did not believe in giving up. He continued to work. Um, he found out, he would say that he found many ways not to succeed. Um, it wasn't failures, but they were different ways not to produce the result that he was looking for. Um, and so that was, that was his, um, that was his motto. I mean, he lived by that, that he didn't get discouraged just because he couldn't make it the first time. He continued to try because he knew that there would be a time that he did complete it and it would be, it would work the way he wanted it to. Um, so name some of his most famous inventions. There was the light bulb, the phonograph, motion pictures were from him and then we've developed and and done way more things since then um obviously their motion pictures are, are so much um, clearer now and and we're able to not just have people on a screen but actually talking like i am here and videos like this would not be possible if his initial invention had not been um, available and it had not worked. If he had given up after the first try or even probably the first five tries, um, we wouldn't have this, the same things that we do today. Um, and he recorded some words on his phonograph and what were the first words to be recorded on the phonograph? If you remember, it's a nursery rhyme. It was Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And he, and he recorded the entire nursery rhyme. And so that was, that was one of his um, inventions. Uh, why is Henry Ford so important in the automotive in industry or history, a part, part of that automotive history? It was because he developed the the assembly line and created a car that most americans could afford to buy without that it was just the rich people that could buy an automotive because it was so expensive to get that no one was able to even probably put aside the money and save within a reasonable amount of time and so this was something that most Americans could say, oh, okay, well, we'll just put aside this much every month or every week, and in a few months or maybe a year, we'll be able to purchase an automobile. And that was something that was within reach for many people. And so that's why he's so important. Um, and the assembly line made this car, uh, the Model T, it made it cheaper to to make and so that was part of this um where did the wright brothers go to test their gliders and make their flights it was kitty hawk north carolina kitty hawk north carolina um, and so that was was where they tested when did the first airplane flight take place do you know the date it was um it was December 17th, 1903. Okay, it's December 17th, 1903. So just five days after my birthday, but many years before, thank you very much. And it was in 1903. And how long, who was the pilot? Which brother was the pilot? Because only one of them was on this, this first initial flight. Orville was the pilot, so he went first. And then how long was the flight? It was actually 12 seconds long and he went 120 feet in those 12 seconds. That's pretty far in 12 seconds, that, but that was because it was the, the plane that he was in and, and what they were able to do with that, okay? 
Um, a few more questions. Who developed the first li successful liquid fueled rocket? It was Robert Goddard, going a little bit faster. What did Goddard use to make his liquid fuel? Gasoline and liquid oxygen. And then when did Ro Goddard's rocket first make its first flight? What year? 1926. All right. Now, if you will, turn in your books to page 254 and 255. We're going to close this lesson by saying the states and capitals together. And then I will let you um, get to reviewing some more. Make sure that you review page 73 of your state notebook for some of those, um, some of the Wyoming facts. So your state flower, um, seal, some of those things are going to be on the test. Um, and so make sure you go over those that you know them well. If you need to watch this video for more review, Tomorrow, go ahead and do that, or the next lesson time, you can rewatch the video for that because I won't be making one for lesson 133. And then, if you do not need another review and you're ready to take the test after you've studied some um, after this video, then you can let your parents know and they can give you the test. All right, um, and the test is four pages, two front and back pages, so it'll look um, It'll look a little odd, but I did staple it together, so um, you don't have to worry about the loose papers, okay? So let's say these states and capitals together. We say capital first and then state. Montgomery, Alabama, Juneau, Alaska, Phoenix, Arizona, Little Rock, Arkansas, Sacramento, California, Denver, Colorado, Hartford, Connecticut, Dover, Delaware, Tallahassee, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia, Honolulu, Hawaii, Boise, Idaho, Springfield, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana, Des Moines, Iowa, Topeka, Kansas, Frankfort, Kentucky, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Augusta, Maine, Annapolis, Maryland, Boston, Massachusetts, Lansing, Michigan, St. Paul, Minnesota, Jackson, Mississippi, Jefferson City, Missouri, Helena, Montana, Lincoln, Nebraska, Carson City, Nevada, Concord, New Hampshire, Trenton, New Jersey, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Albany, New York, Raleigh, North Carolina, Bismarck, North Dakota, Columbus, Ohio, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Salem, Oregon, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Providence, Rhode Island, Columbia, South Carolina, Pierre, South Dakota, Nashville, Tennessee, Austin, Texas, Salt Lake City, Utah, Montpelier, Vermont, Richmond, Virginia, Olympia, Washington, Charleston, West Virginia, Madison, Wisconsin, and Cheyenne, Wyoming. All right, so go ahead and um, you may do your skill sheet 17 and make sure to study well for your test um, in the following lesson. See you next time.